Good morning. I wanted to show you a video concerning Tiny Basic. I sat down this morning and wrote quite a bit of code. Well, not quite a bit. It actually took me about 30 minutes. Um, all I had to really do was uh, rewrite the in and out routines. That way that they deal with memory rather than I.O. And at that point, it was pretty much done. But um, here's um, what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and clear the RAM. And just to verify that the area of memory that we're going to be dealing with is clean, we're going to dump that area of memory just to confirm it should be absolutely clear. Okay, yeah, it's clear. This area here. So we're going to start up basic. Now I'm just for the sake of speed, I've already typed up this program, I'm going to just send it over. Here we go. Poke test. As you can see, it's punched in the program for me. Alright, so let's, first off, let's get rid of some of this garbage in the screen. And we're going to list. Okay, so now that we can look at this without all the other garbage on the screen. We're letting A equal 1 and B equal 0. The reason why we're letting B equal 0 is just simply so that it's a clean slate starting off. That way you know that there's nothing in that location. Then we are going to poke A into memory location A000, or A000, rather. And then we are going to peak location A000 into B. Okay? Then we are going to print B. We're going to jump to 100 and do a delay routine, uh, basically about a one millisecond, uh, well, I'm sorry, uh, about a 500 millisecond delay. And then we are going to return. And then we are going to let A equals A plus one, and then return, and then go back to the beginning up here to poke. So in other words, what it's going to do is it's going to write an initial value to A of one. It's going to poke that into memory, read it back, print the value. It's going to delay for uh, about half a second, and then it's going to increase A by one, and then uh, poke that back into memory, read it back out of memory, print it, and continue on, and just repeatedly go over and over and over this again. So it's a pretty straightforward program, but it's a very good test because it shows you that we are actually um, altering memory locations and printing that value. And the reason why that's important that we're using two different variables is because if this didn't work, I could just plug that variable into A and it would just print it. By actually changing which variable it's reading from, we know that it's actually working. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this program. So as you can see, it's slowly counting up. This will go for quite a while. Um, you know, it gets up there, I guess at 255 it would, well, no, I guess at 255 it wouldn't flip, at 255 it would actually um, keep increasing because the variables are two byte variables. So I guess in theory it can go up to 65,564 or 65. At that point it would become negative, or no? I guess it would be 32,000 something because I, I believe that the uh, very last bit uh, denotes whether or not it's positive or negative. What, whatever the case may be, um, as we can see it's working. Of course we can clear out of it. Let's go back and take a look at it. It's pretty straightforward. Now the code itself is actually, like I said, it's not that much different from the in and out command. As you can see, the in and out command are very, very uh, straightforward. We're you know storing the registers. We're comparing it to see if it's a space. If it's not a space, we're going to go ahead and get the hexadecimal value and convert it into a um, you know real number. And we're then going to compare the next location until it's no longer a comma, a space, or an equal sign. We're then going to know that it's going to be the variable location, so we have to uh, get that, do a conversion, and then get the byte and send it out. And that's the end command. Now on the um, uh, peak, it's basically the same thing. We're storing the registers, we're comparing to see if it's a space, only this time we have to get two hexadecimal numbers and then store those in HL. Um, but um, at that point, we want to actually read it in and then push that value onto the stack. 
just for storage purposes. We will then go down and do a comparison to see if it's a comma, a space, or an equal sign again. We'll get the um, area of memory uh, for the variable. We'll do the conversion, and then we will actually read that area in. Or I'm sorry, uh, we'll uh, load that value up or that variable up with the value from the memory location that we pulled from earlier. So as you can see, we're popping it off the stack here. We're loading it in, then of course we're just returning like we normally would. And poke is the exact same thing as um, out. The only difference is, is again, we're getting two um, hexadecimal values and we're uh, modifying memory instead. See here the actual um, uh, locations that we used before. And I've been trying to clean this up. I've got this uh, call here to get hex that used to actually be quite a bit different. Uh, each one of those commands had, you know, this little area of code. So I am trying to slim it down, uh, stop having so much redundant code. It's just doing it in a manner that it all works together. It's just a piece by piece process. You have to, you know, one step at a time. So I am slimming it down, but it does work. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, you know, we can run this and it's you know, it seems to run fine, it's just I need to optimize the code. That way it takes up less space and um, is a little bit more efficient. And then once it's ready to go, I plan on releasing it. This um, this is going to be the last two sets of commands that I actually add to Tiny Basic, I believe, at least for now. I'm going to be releasing this as, I think, version 2.5G. And, uh, of course, I'll put the link up on my website with instructions on modifying the source. That way it works with your own computer. But um, it's it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is modify the um, the um, in C and out C commands or uh, routines, and at that point it knows what to do as far as getting a character or putting a character on the screen. So, but uh, that's the gist of it. Like I said, very short video today. I just wanted to show you the progress that I've made, and of course, uh, let's uh, actually go and take a look at that area of memory. So if we actually look here, it's a 5E, which if we scroll up 94, let's see about getting a calculator. Uh, I'm not great with um, doing conversions this early in the morning. 9E is 94, what did we say? 94, yep, so there we go, it works. So no problems there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, check out the website, www.retrodepot.net. Um, I'm usually posting some type of update on there, uh, usually on a, uh, at least a semi-weekly basis. Videos tend to only go up you know, once a week or so. Also, I do have the boards up on my um, website as well as on my eBay store. You can check those out. Um, and then aside from that, um, enjoy the videos, watch them. If you have any questions, comment below, and obviously my email still works at the website, so you can always contact me there. All right, guys, have a great weekend, or what's left of it, and we'll see you on the next video.